In this video, various wave phenomena will be explored. We will begin by exploring how waves can be described in terms of wavefronts and rays. The reflection of waves can then be discussed using wavefront and ray diagrams, before we give a brief introduction into the refraction of waves. This video will end with a discussion on the diffraction of waves. To introduce wavefronts and rays, let's imagine that we have a pool of water and then we drop a stone into the pool at this point here. When the stone reaches the water surface, the stone will produce waves that will radiate out across the water surface from the point of impact as shown in this animation. Notice how the green circle joins the crest of the waves, hence the green circle shows the points on the wave that are in phase. Also notice how every point on the green circle is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. These two properties in combination define a wavefront, so the green circle represents a wavefront of the wave. Now let's draw these lines that show the wave's direction of travel. These lines are called rays and are always perpendicular to the wavefronts. We will now be able to represent waves using wavefronts and rays. If we look vertically down on the pool, we can draw multiple two-dimensional wavefronts for the wave and draw the corresponding rays as follows. Recall that the wavefronts show all the points on the wave that are in phase, so the distance between any two successive wavefronts must be equal to the wavelength of the wave. Note also that rays always cross wavefronts at an angle of 90 degrees. Now let's consider this section of the wavefronts close to the source. Notice how the wavefronts near the source are very curved. As the wave moves further away from the centre, the wavefronts get larger and larger. But if we now consider an equal sized section of the wavefronts far away from the source, the wavefronts look nearly straight. This is why wavefronts are often drawn parallel to each other when representing waves, because it is assumed that the source of the waves is at a far away distance such that the wavefronts are essentially straight, which are also sometimes called plain waves. When a wave pulse travels through a given medium, such as a rope, the pulse will be reflected differently if the rope has one end fixed which cannot move, or one loose end that is free to move. Let's first consider the rope with one end fixed to a wall, and send a wave pulse with an upward displacement through the rope. At the instant that the pulse hits the fixed end, the rope exerts an upward force on the fixed end. By Newton's third law, the wall will exert an equal but opposite force on the rope. This force creates a reflected wave pulse with a negative displacement that travels to the left. So we say that the wave pulse has been inverted, because the wave pulse has experienced a phase change of 180 degrees when it is reflected. We can now consider the rope with one loose end that is free to move, and send the same wave pulse through the rope. As the pulse reaches the loose end, the end of the rope moves upwards with the pulse. Eventually, the loose end of the rope returns to its starting position, which creates a reflected pulse with an upward displacement moving to the left. But this time, it is not inverted as there is no phase change. We can now use wavefront and ray diagrams to illustrate how waves behave when they are reflected. Waves that travel to a reflecting surface can change direction at the surface. Take this wave here, which is represented by these wavefronts. These are known as the incident wavefronts. When the wavefronts hit this flat reflecting surface, which could be a mirror for example, they will be reflected as follows, and these are known as the reflected wavefronts. The rays for the wave can also be drawn, which are known as the incident and reflected ray respectively. To explore this behaviour in more detail, we will simplify this animation to the following ray diagram. We will draw in this line that is perpendicular to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence, known as the normal line. This line is important because it allows us to label the following two angles. The angle of incidence is measured between the incident ray and the normal line, and the angle of reflection is measured between the reflected ray and the normal line. We now have the necessary components to state the law of reflection. The first part of the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. In other words, the wave will have the same angle leaving the surface as it did arriving, relative to the normal of the surface. This can be demonstrated in the following animation, which shows that as the angle of incidence is increased, the angle of reflection increases by the same amount. The second part of the law of reflection states that the incident and reflected rays and the normal line lie on the same plane 
plane called the plane of incidence. We can take this two-dimensional figure and rotate it into three dimensions to leave us with this image which more clearly shows the rays and normal line in the same plane. The law of reflection governs how our eyes see images and is fundamental to the use of mirrors and telescopes amongst other uses. When we place an object in front of a mirror, an image is formed which appears to be inside the mirror. But what is actually happening is light coming from the object will reflect off the mirror and the reflected rays are directed to a person's eye. Our brain assumes that light moves in an uninterrupted straight line and so the dotted lines represent the apparent path of light rays from the image. This this is what forms the image and why it appears to be an equal distance behind the mirror. The direction in which waves travel can also change due to a process called refraction. In this animation, the lighter blue section represents a faster medium such as air and the darker blue section represents a slower medium such as water. We begin by noting that waves travel at different speeds in different media when the wave fronts are incident at the boundary. One side of the wave fronts is slowed down before the other. This reduction in speed causes the wave to change direction toward the normal line of the boundary and this can be represented by the refracted ray. Also notice how the wave fronts get compressed as they move into the slower medium, so the wavelength of the wave also decreases after refraction. In most cases there is both partial reflection and partial refraction when waves are incident at a boundary between two media, so there would also be a reflected ray, but the reflected wave fronts are not shown in this animation. The opposite scenario occurs when waves travel from a slower medium to a faster medium. In this case, one side of the wave fronts increases in speed before the other as it is incident at the boundary, causing the wave fronts to deflect away from the normal line. The wave fronts also become more spread out, increasing the wavelength of the wave. No refraction occurs when waves are incident along the normal line of the boundary as they will continue along the normal line of the boundary undeflected. Refraction is fundamental fundamental to the use of lenses and is responsible for the formation of rainbows amongst other users. Refraction will be covered in greater detail in another video. Our final topic in this video is diffraction. Diffraction is the process of waves changing direction without the waves being incident at a boundary between two different media. It causes the spreading out of a wave and occurs when waves go past an obstacle or through a gap, which is sometimes called an aperture or a slit. When the width of the aperture is larger than the wavelength of the wave, the spreading of the wave only occurs at the edges of the aperture and the wave passes through with only slight diffraction. However, as the width of the aperture becomes comparable in length to the wavelength of the wave, the diffraction is greater and the wave fronts become more circular. Another property of diffraction is that the frequency, wavelength and speed of the waves all remain constant after diffraction. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. Wave fronts represent all the points on the wave that are in phase, and rays show the wave's direction of travel. Wave front and ray diagrams can be used to demonstrate various wave phenomena. Waves can be reflected off a reflective surface where the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Waves can also be refracted at the boundary between two media, where the amount and direction of refraction depends on the differences between the speeds of the two media. Finally, we showed that waves can be diffracted, changing direction when they go past an obstacle or a gap. This now concludes our video about basic wave phenomena. Thank you for watching.